Mädels. Sehr, sehr interessantes Video. 4,25 Millionen Aufrufe. Die letzten 10,5 Stunden von Extantation. Um Nummer 3. Gott, doch sowas. Hey, hey, hey. Ähm, gehen wir rein. Wir gucken uns ja auch gerade die Doku an. Ich warte nur auf den dritten Part, bis der endlich rauskommt. Solange ziehen wir uns rein, was in den letzten Stunden bei X abging. Minutes after this surveillance footage was recorded, XXX Tentastion was shot and killed right at the front of this very same motorcycle store. Several gunshots possibly drive by. A witness advised a black Dodge Journey shot someone in the back BMW. Located within this mentioned black Dodge Journey were four individuals Michael Boatwright, Trayvon Newsom, Robert Allen, and Dedrick Williams. The last two having been seen on the surveillance footage next to XXX Tentacion just moments before the tragedy. Why were these two shady looking guys snooping around the motorcycle store in the minutes before his death? What was the motive behind the killing? Did the perpetrators know XXX Tentacion personally? After being pronounced dead at 4.51 p.m. that very same afternoon, investigators would look over the prior 10.5 hours of Jazzy Omfroy's life back to 6 a.m. that morning, at which point they discovered that his day started normally and that nothing was out of the ordinary. At 6.05 a.m. he'd begin the day with a game of League of Legends before logging off 22 minutes later at 6.27 a.m. Now it's impossible to tell if he'd been playing the game all night Lord. Or if he'd simply gotten up early to have a quick match before getting the day started. But either way, beginning his final day with video games didn't exactly seem unusual or indicate any awareness about the fate that was waiting for him that afternoon. Mm. However, X did seem to have a sneaking suspicion that he would eventually suffer a premature death. In an Instagram livestream from December 2017, six months prior, XXX Tentacion discussed both the possibility of death whilst outlining what he hoped his legacy might become when he did eventually die. If I'm gonna die or ever be a sacrifice, I want to make sure that my life made at least 5 million kids happy or they found some sort of answers or resolve in my life. In the weeks and months that followed this Instagram livestream, X had both increased his security and vowed to never leave his house alone. Which would be discussed by a friend and producer ZX Flo, also, who stated he did not travel schlimmste. alone. He never traveled alone. He knew that he has enemies, obviously. He would not go places alone. I know there were people who were very jealous and envious of him. He came from an area where not a lot of people make it out. XXX Tentacion had grown up in Lord Hill, Florida, a suburban area which in 2014 was ranked as the eighth most dangerous small city in America. And if we examine X's upbringing in the area, it's really no surprise that by his final day on earth, he had certainly created some enemies. Lord Hill is like the hood. Lord Hill is like- So, okay, you grew up in the hood. Wait, you're a fighter? You've been getting a lot of fights? Um, bro, I've been fighting since I was a kid. What, he's always been throwing the hands or what? I mean, I've been there plenty situations, like plenty fights. After growing up in somewhat of a rough environment, with his mother being a stripper and his father partly a drug dealer, Dealer, fighting people became a regular part of XXX Tentacion's life, almost like a hobby. He'd be enrolled in a school choir during elementary school, where he began to develop his love for music, yet would be kicked out after punching another band member in the middle of a public I'm performance. Yo. Like I was in choir, ended up getting kicked out while we was literally doing a performance okay. because he kept touching me when we were what singing. Being kicked out of educational institutions for fighting became what? somewhat of a performance. Like I was in music, yet would be kicked out after punching another band member in the middle of a public performance. Mm. Like I was in choir, ended up getting kicked out while we was literally doing a performance okay. because he kept touching me when we what were singing. Being kicked out of educational institutions for fighting Branded. became somewhat of a trend in X's life. After the school choir event, he'd then be expelled from Margate Middle School after kicking another kid in the mouth, whilst also getting into a fight with a random person who had provoked him on the bus ride home. As a result of X's short fuse in the eighth grade, his mother would kick him out of home, at which point he'd go and live with his grandmother who lived in a gated community reputable for drug dealing and gang violence, a place where XXX Tentacion would come to find even more. Ist ja auch geil. Er will im Endeffekt aus der ganzen Scheiße raus, kommt zu seiner Oma, wo es halt der Hot Point ist von Drogenhandel und Schlägereien und sowas. Enemies. In this area, X came into the possession of a firearm and began to take part in armed robberies, ultimately resulting in his first nine-month stint in a Florida juvenile detention center. While locked up, X would meet another individual by the name of Stokely Cleavon Goldborn, who would later come to be known as Ski Mask the Slump God. It was hard. We had to make it on our own. They kicked us out. We met in jail. We met in jail. Having come from the same county, X and Ski Mask decided that after leaving prison, they'd meet up to continue their life of crime together. However, after noticing that they both had a mutual interest in freestyle rapping, they would instead leave prison, purchase a blue snowball microphone and enter a substantially safer business, music. 
Yeah, we need an outlet to just stop getting in trouble. He ordered um, the stuff off of eBay. It was like a snowball mic, Audacity, and like a laptop. XXXTentacion would create his first ever song alongside Ski Mask titled New Slash Flock, then post it to SoundCloud after his release from prison, with his second song, Vice City, discussing this desire to leave his life of crime in the past. From this point onwards, X would become so serious about his music career that over four years later, on the final day of his life, creating music was still very much a daily habit. Because at around 8 a.m., approximately an hour and a half after logging off League of Legends at 6.27 a.m., X would work on the beat for a new song recorded two days prior titled Chase Glass Shards, which would, unbeknownst to him at the time, be the last piece of music he ever worked on. This would continue over the next six hours between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m., in the process interacting with his girlfriend Genesis, who had become sick and was considering seeing a doctor. Without the knowledge that after that afternoon, he'd never see Genesis ever again, X had something else on his mind, buying a new motorbike. At 3.11 p.m., X would FaceTime his mother for two minutes, asking if she'd accompany him to a motorcycle dealership in Deerfield Beach, to which she would say no, sparking an argument, resulting in her agreeing to instead go to the doctor with Genesis. Vowing to never leave the house alone, XXX Tentacion would instead head to the dealership with his step-uncle, stopping by the Bank of America on the way over. X pulled up to the bank driving his $150,000 BMW i8, whilst wearing a gold chain and a $2,000 Louis Vuitton bag. He walked in calmly and withdrew $50,000 in cash, placing each and every $100 bill neatly into his Louis Vuitton bag, at which point he'd be noticed by the four previously mentioned suspects, Michael Bogright, yeah, yeah. Trayvon Newsom, Robert Allen, and Dedrick Williams, establishing a potential motive for the killing, financial gain. Just weeks prior to this $50,000 cash withdrawal, XXXTentacion had signed a deal for his third studio album, worth a reported 10 million US dollars. However, also fing das bei ihm gerade auch richtig an das Leben, ne? Hätte richtig vernünftig werden. Aber landing such a lucrative deal was no walk in the park. Was heißt vernünftig, Bruder? Aber wenigstens halt nicht mehr diesen ganzen big ass shit, Digga, wo auch immer gefährlich Park. Continuing on from where we left off earlier, after releasing Vice City in 2014, rapping about his desire to leave his life of crime in the past, X continued to release music, yet failed to achieve any success in the beginning. Having no following whilst being fresh out of prison, led X to take on a 9 to 5 day job, working Speaking as an over-the-phone electricity salesman. I've only done one job and I was a sales broker because I knew how to run my mouth. Electricity salesman. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jose Onfori from uh Energy Solutions, how are you doing today? Around a year and a half later, on the 30th of December 2015, XXX Tentacion would drop one of his now most infamous songs titled <laughs> Look at Me. The track would Make me, digger. Come to be known as a sleeper hit, laying dormant for over a year before exploding in early 2017. However, in the process, Look X began to build a cult following of incredibly loyal supporters for his unique sound and style. X, 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 I, I wanted no, to ask you about no, him. No, 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 no he, he's, he's still growing and you know he's very young and, and as every artist, you know, is growing. But when, he, when he speaks, you know, you can tell he's actually he's an, an intelligent guy, individual. Sure. He's not he's not a dumbass dude and he, I think he has he actually has a message. So. By early 2016, around two years after beginning his music career, he had achieved 18,500 followers on SoundCloud, yet had become one of the most highly requested rappers to be interviewed on Adam 22's No Jumper podcast. Also, ganz ehrlich, damals diese SoundCloud Zeit hätte ich auch noch mal gerne richtig miterlebt. Ich habe nur das Ende so ein bisschen mitbekommen. Da hat es ja auch schon alles angefangen, dass die ganzen SoundCloud Rapper einfach auf YouTube gegangen sind. Like I have a cult family, so I don't have like a weak ass family. Like you have a crazy ass following on social media and stuff, and like. It's not like necessarily the craziest like numbers like 10,000 or whatever or how many are you on SoundCloud? Um SoundCloud I'm not 18 18.5 Just the number of people who have asked me to interview you is f insane like yeah. considering you know that you're a, a, like an yeah, underground more, artist like yeah, the number of tweets I had to read about you man However XXX Tentacion was unable to stay out of trouble with the law and only three months after the previously shown interview would be jailed once again for robbery and assault with a deadly weapon After posting his bail set at $10,000 he'd be released however only three months after that he'd be arrested once again after being accused of domestic violence against his girlfriend at the time The interesting thing oh. about rappers, however, oh, is that criminal charges and prison sentences are often glorified by their fans and seem to do wonders for keeping them relevant. This is exactly what happened to XXX Tentacion, as it would ironically be during this third stint in jail that his notoriety and also, er ist in der, also er ist in Klasse gekommen für Straftaten und das hat ihn einfach noch mehr gepusht, anstatt ihn runterzuziehen. Music career would find its way into the mainstream. In January 2017, his song Look At Me, which had been released over 12 months prior, peaked at number 34 on the US Hot 100 Billboard after X had been locked up for two months and was doing absolutely nothing to promote it, while many of his other songs began to trend alongside it. His newly found notoriety whilst in prison led to countless six-figure record label offers under the assumption that it was going to be even bigger after being released from prison. XXX Tentacion ended 
ended up spending six months behind bars during this third stint and was released in April 2017 with more fame, more fans, and more enemies than ever. After receiving a deal worth an estimated $6 million for the production of his second studio album titled Question Mark, X would purchase a $1.4 million mansion in Parkland, Florida to house him, his girlfriend, and his mom. In the space of one year and three months, X had gone from an underground artist in prison to a multi-millionaire mainstream celebrity. However, while X had certainly built the fame and fortune, perhaps he didn't have enough time to build the high level of wisdom required to manage his high status position, bringing us back to the moment that he withdrew $50,000 cash on his very final day. The reasoning behind why X felt the need to carry such a large amount of money in physical $100 bills is anyone's best guess. Perhaps he knew the dealership would give him a better price if he paid with physical cash, or maybe he just wanted to feel like a baller walking around with the average American salary in his backpack. However, if X never made this withdrawal, the outcome at the end of the day might have been incredibly different. Because after leaving the bank, X would be followed by the four previously mentioned perpetrators to Reva Motorsports, all of which arriving at 3.30 p.m. approximately 10 minutes later. Two of the alleged perpetrators, Robert Allen and Dedrick Williams, are seen walking right next to XXX Tentacion whilst he looked at bikes, with the other two alleged perpetrators, Michael Boatwright and Trayvon Newsom, waiting outside in the Black Dodge Journey. 25 minutes later, at 3.55 p.m., XXX Tentacion would go to drive out of the motorcycle dealership before the Dodge Journey would block the exit, at which point two masked men jumped out of the car and demanded X's Louis Vuitton bag and gold chain. The thieves would successfully take both of these items after a bit of a struggle. However, even though the robbery was over, when X looked at one of the men directly in the eyes, he'd take two steps back and do the unthinkable. We have schon alles gehabt, Junge. Verstehe ich nicht. Bay, this is something that has really stunned fans of XXX Tentacion, a rising star here in South Florida. Fans began to gather here right after learning about the shooting that claimed his life. They just held a moment of silence, but they've been here listening to his music, praying and lighting candles in his memory. Disgustingly, in the hours after X's death, Dedrick Williams, one of the suspects, would record a video of himself happily dancing around with a so bunch of $100 bills, also spending $800 so on designer clothes at a Fort Lauderdale store the day after the killing. Sim so Similarly, police would find a $400 receipt for clothing and shoes in a garbage can at Michael Boatwright's house, purchased 13 days after X's death. However, while these complete and utter scumbags were living it up on their newly found unearned fortune, X's music career was having its own after-death explosion. When he passed, bro, I went up a million followers. General. Anything that had to do with him went up. I mean, yeah, it's weird to see, like, like his Instagram followers doubled when he passed. He went from, like, 7 to 14. Almost see that. Like, it's just crazy to see how people react when somebody passes. As mentioned in an article written by Hypebeast, sales of his first studio album, 17, jumped up 9,000%, while his sophomore question mark project released back in March saw a staggering 41,306% spike in less than 24 hours after his tragic death. Similarly, his average monthly YouTube music viewership jumped from 150 million per month to 400 million per month following his death, giving him a permanent increase in the value of his music as an offset to his passing. It was kind of like karma, a superstition that X certainly believed in. I believe in past lives and future lives. I believe in the karmic cycle. I believe until you align the karmic cycle, you Nothing else matters. However, by the same token, after X had been to prison twice for armed robbery himself, perhaps his own death during an armed robbery was, as he put it, the karmic cycle realigning itself. However, no matter how poor X's prior decisions might have been, they weren't nearly as stupid as those involved in the killing. With bullet casings at the scene of the crime matching guns owned by the perpetrators, and evidence as obvious as Diedrich Williams purchasing a neoprene mask from the motorcycle store just minutes prior to the robbery, each of the four men were arrested one by one in the two That's months that followed so the tragic event. The perpetrators would have their fingerprints taken and would each face a pre-examination. However, almost four years later, the men are still yet to face trial and have therefore received no charges. However, this hasn't stopped XXX Tentacion's father, Dwayne Onfroy, from expressing what he hopes might happen to the perpetrators. You all killed that young man, that father, that son, that brother, without a cause. I say this, no malice in my heart. I'm seeking life without parole for the participants in the robbery and cold-blooded murder of my son and the man who pulled the trigger. I'm going to seek the death penalty. Gut, wie willst du aber auch anders reagieren als Vater? Nach so einer gottlosen Aktion. Ja, die Prinzip ist auch nice. Die ziehen wir uns auch nochmal rein. Aber wir haben ja letztes Mal schon die letzten paar Tage von Piep reingezogen, ne? Ich glaube, der hat mehrere so eine Videos in der Art gemacht. Vielleicht sehen wir uns dann nächstes Mal die von Piep rein. Wenn er selber nochmal was gemacht hat, ne? Wirklich sehr, sehr gutes Video. Und ich verstehe das nicht, wie diese... Obwohl sie halt schon die Tasche hatten mit dem Geld und alles drin, dass sie dann trotzdem noch auf ihn schießen. Das verstehe ich nicht. 
Vor allem sich danach noch auch feiern, Digga. Du merkst halt schon, die sind komplett fernab von, gut, von allem Guten und Bösen.